It's no question that Monster Hunter is one of the most influential game series of all time. Capcom has made many titles prior and after, but with the release of Monster Hunter World, it would become their highest selling game ever made. The series has become a household name at this point, but if I were to guess, the majority of players have never fully experienced what Monster Hunter was previous to World. The titles have evolved from being survival sim games to ones that are more focused on monster combat exclusively. Does that make the newer games not as good as the originals? Not a bit. Change is good, and the majority of changes have been improvements for the series as a whole. I love the newer entries and I'm extremely excited for the release of Monster Hunter Sunbreak. I'm more focused on the gameplay, vibe, and what Monster Hunter meant to me when I first played it, and how it's changed over time. Good, bad, or why? I'm Monster Hunter Ike, and this is Monster Hunter Then and Now. Do you remember the first time you played a Monster Hunter game? I started my Monster Hunter journey with the third generation, Monster Hunter Try on the Wii. My brother was given the game as a present, but he never got into it due to the game not being as streamlined as most American titles would be at the time. I took it upon myself to try it out. When I first picked up the game, I was completely lost and confused. With no idea that you even had weapons to choose from, I stuck with the default sword and shield. I remember taking days to finish the first few hunter ranks and finally reaching the first large monster, the Great Jaggy. Even in a recent playthrough of the game, I took my time through the tutorial and reached the Great Jaggy quest in an hour and 15 minutes. While the tutorials of earlier Monster Hunter games were admittedly way too long, they gave this feeling of true adventure. In Monster Hunter Tri, you're slowly introduced to Moga Woods, an island attached to Moga Village. With each quest, the areas of the map are exposed. While not the most dopamine-inducing experience, collecting mushrooms, ore, and bugs made the player slow down and truly breathe in the world. I felt like I was a part of a real village, contributing to the villagers' needs. It made playing these quests have some kind of purpose, especially not knowing what rewards you would get from them. Seeing the village grow with each quest was a satisfying feeling, and it felt good to get them back on their feet. This was an element of the Monster Hunter series that I feel has sorely been missed in recent years. While the villager quests in Monster Hunter Rise still give good rewards, it's only in your interest. I know that sounds a bit silly considering the AI of these games don't actually have feelings or needs, but it made the vibe and world of the games more believable. Instead of just handing you the reward, you were given it through the overall improvement of the village and people around you. Another aspect that I miss from older generations is the real feeling of intimidation you would get when facing a new monster. Of course, I've been playing this series for a while, so a lot of monsters I've gotten comfortable with over the years, but when I first heard that a Legiacris was threatening Moga Village, I legitimately didn't know what to expect. And yes, I said Legiacris. Change my mind. When you see this monster for the first time, there is no way that you could imagine standing up to it. It gave me so much respect and fear knowing that this thing could one-shot me. When you eventually face the monster, you have adequate weapons, armor, and other monster experience. When I originally hunted the Legiacris, I thought it was the last boss. It was such an intense fight, it took everything out of me. I stretched the 50 minute time limit to the last 5 minutes, barely defeating this great leviathan. Now maybe it's all nostalgia, that very well could be, but I feel like the sense of intimidation and wonder has diminished in newer titles, knowing the vast majority of monsters will fight before the games even release. I understand this process is important at the same time though. Capcom wants to create excitement for returning monsters being added into new games. But I hope that Monster Hunter Sunbreak will give us some big mysteries and additions that we didn't see coming. The point is, with all the information laid out in front of us, I feel that hunting monsters doesn't have as much weight as it used to. 
You know pretty much everything about the monster you're hunting before the hunt is even over. This isn't a huge issue seeing as you could just look up the monster's stats online in the older generations, but I think the experience would be richer if you could slowly learn about the monster's specific weaknesses, patterns, and fighting styles over the course of multiple hunts. Another small addition that I think changed the vibe of the Monster Hunter series is the new limp icon that was added in Monster Hunter Rise. This small change might be the only serious grievance I have with the newer titles. It takes so much away from the feeling of hunting an actual monster and makes it feel like a minigame. Before you had to look for signs like broken parts, cut tails, exhaustion, and a physical limp when the monster was capturable. Those elements of the hunt are still in newer titles, but seeing the blue icon alert us that the monster is limping breaks a lot of the tension of the hunt. Sometimes in older games, you would accidentally kill a monster when you were meaning to capture it due to the lack of this icon, but that was a rare occurrence. Watching the monster physically limp away from the fight felt more rewarding and I wish that Capcom would at least allow us to turn off this feature if we don't want it. Finally, I hope in a later release Capcom gives us the opportunity to track monsters again. World did it fine with gathering data on the monster while you roam around the map, but the areas within the map are so overpacked with foliage that I found myself constantly getting lost. I think it was a step in the right direction regardless, and it beats knowing exactly where the monster is at all times of the hunt. With both new and old Monster Hunter, the game still delivers in its art direction, visuals, and especially its music. Immersion has never been a real issue for me with these games, but I think slight changes like these would increase that aspect a bit. All that being said, Rise did an excellent job with its delivery. It gives you brand new vertical maps to explore that are lush with new endemic life and have tons of secrets to find. Kimura Village is a great hub with unique and colorful characters and the monsters felt refreshing and challenging, especially Magnamalo, Almadron, and the Apex variants. Whatever Monster Hunter game you started with will probably still give you the best vibe of any other title, and I'm glad that more and more new players are able to connect with this series that I hold so dearly. The only thing that I believe would greatly improve this series is if Capcom focused on some elements that don't involve monster combat. How does nobody at Capcom know how to make an interesting story about hunting monsters? As a bonus, I miss the day and night cycles that Monster Hunter Dose and Try offered. Present again in Rise, but the only difference between them now is how dark or light the maps are, at least as far as I know. Monsters that are only available during certain seasons of the year like Monster Hunter Dose are a bit extreme, but a monster that only comes out at night gives you that variation without having to wait so long. Maybe seasons could change how certain maps look during different times of the year. Certain monsters could migrate to different locales depending on how hot or cold the usual locale is. These are some small changes that I think could add some more flavor to the game, giving the vibe an overall boost. Okay, so I consider myself a pretty average Monster Hunter player, and I just want people to understand that my perspective or experience isn't the same as other players. We all experience difficulty differently, so this might not apply to you. With that being said, older generations of Monster Hunter annihilated my soul. I remember the countless hours of triple carding to most of the roster when I first started playing Tri. Over the years I've gotten a lot better at these games, but revisiting Monster Hunter Try again humbled me. I think a large part of this difficulty shift is the added available options present in newer games that were not present in previous titles. Mobility has become extremely fast, making it a lot easier to dance around the monster and get out of danger situations. The wire bug mechanic in Rise gives you a plethora of movement options on top of being able to evade after you get knocked down. I feel that this is the main reason that Rise feels a lot less challenging. That's not to say it's without challenge though. Again, specific monsters like Magnamalo, Almadron, and the Apex variants keep up with your speed and punish you when you make mistakes. Now let's take it back to older generations. 
I think a lot of the challenge of Monster Hunter Try came from the lack of player mobility, while monsters were fast, punishing, and hard to keep up with. If you were playing solo, you had to be very cautious when taking potions, sharpening your weapon, placing traps, etc. One mistimed move could result in half of your health being depleted or getting knocked unconscious. Not only did this make the game challenging, but it taught you to choose your actions wisely. This is the reason why Dark Souls is another favorite of mine. Both games teach you that planning your actions is very important. You overcame that obstacle because you trained and worked hard for it. In Monster Hunter Rise, I was really hesitant about Wirebug evading. I thought that it would completely take away the importance of decision making and would create a mechanic that would get you out of anything, even if you deserve to be punished. While it does make the monsters easier to manage, especially in the beginning of the game, a lot of monsters toward the end of the game will still punish you for evading with your wire bugs. Some of the monsters mistime their attacks on purpose to mix you up, and some monsters' moves are just too fast for you to get away in time. I'm glad to see that Capcom is aware that they need to work around this new mechanic to deliver a good challenge, and hopefully we can get more monsters that will push this challenge further. Personally, I think a cool idea would be to have a monster that punishes you for using wire bugs at all. Maybe the monster gets a damage buff or makes the conditions around you more dangerous. This would flip the game on its head, making a new challenge for players that get too used to abusing this mechanic. Something else I think would benefit new Monster Hunter games would be the return of small monsters being able to contribute to the fight. In Monster Hunter Tri, the Great Jaggy fight has small Jaggy running rampant around you, attacking when they can. Not only does this make you feel like you're fighting a pack of monsters collectively, but it adds a layer of challenge, forcing you to work your way to the Great Jaggy. I really like the design of the Great Azuchi in Rise and how small Azuchi would fight alongside the monster trying to create synchronized moves against the player. But in reality, I think the idea fell flat on its face. Small monsters are way too weak, giving barely noticeable damage to the player, and the AI for the small Azuchi seems hit or miss, making them rarely sync up with the Great Azuchi's strong attacks. Maybe we'll get a revamp on this idea with the release of a new monster in the future. Next is the controls. I think this is the biggest improvement that new Monster Hunter games have given us. There's so much depth and variation in every weapon type nowadays, making all weapons playable and viable. On top of that, controlling your hunter is smoother than ever, feeling the most polished to date. I want to relate to the controls and how many options you have, because I believe it's what separates the newer games from the older ones. Everyone talks about how older generations are clunky and the controls are limited. While I agree in some cases, I think Tri's limitations make the experience vastly different from newer generations, in a good way. It's like chess compared to a modern board game. Chess is slow and forces you to make optimal decisions. Your moves are limited, making it so you have to set up your pieces properly to get the checkmate. A lot of modern board games on the other hand go all over the place. You could play a game like Risk where many players are making many decisions that all influence each other. You could be making all the right moves but in the end someone could still pull out the victory. It's not about which one is better or worse, but it's definitely a different experience. If you haven't played the older generations of Monster Hunter, I would recommend Try for that reason. The original two Monster Hunter games on the PS2 use the right analog stick to attack, forcing your left index finger to move the camera with the D-pad. It is truly beyond me why anyone thought this was a good control scheme to implement, and for that reason I can't recommend the original two games. Try on the other hand sticks with button controls and makes the experience more enjoyable and playable. Try is limited in movement, but presents an awesome challenge that I think everyone would enjoy. Hey friends, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to give a little background on why I created this video. Um, I've always wanted to make Monster Hunter content. Uh, but recently I've been watching a lot of Monster Hunter creators, uh, including Gaijin Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter Henry, Super Rad, and uh, Monster Hunter Jacob, and a few others. And uh, it just lit the spark under me to finally make a video like this, because 
I've always had a lot to say about these games. They're super special to me. And, um, and yeah, it was a lot of work. I've never made a video like this before, but it was super fun uh, and super challenging. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we have part three left, but uh, if you've enjoyed up to this point, consider leaving a like or subscribing or commenting, letting me know what you liked, if there's anything I should work on, constructive criticism, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and have a great day. Monster Hunter is important to me. I can't believe that I've been playing these games for 12 years. As a kid, I think Monster Hunter Try really helped with my development. It taught me a lot about overcoming tough challenges and how to see something through until the end. Being someone who was brand new to Monster Hunter, it was a monumental challenge to finish this game, let alone play it at all. But Capcom created an experience that drew me in like nothing else ever would. The world of these games are incredible to play in. They feel alive and fleshed out. I was lost in this game for a year straight, playing it almost daily. I remember being that age was difficult. You're slowly growing and transitioning out of a part of your life that you'll never go back to. A lot of things change throughout this time, and the fear of growing up and facing the real world can cause a lot of anxiety. But no matter what age I got, and still to this day, Every time I hear the Moga Village theme, I'm instantly brought back. It's comforting knowing that I will always have these games to fall back on, to distract me, and to make memories with. After my journey with Monster Hunter Tri, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate came out on the 3DS a year later. I convinced my brothers and friends to get the game, and we've all been playing Monster Hunter together ever since. My best Monster Hunter memories are playing with the people that I care about most wasting time away on the couch, and enjoying each other's company. I also met a ton of amazing people online throughout the years. Back when I played Try, I didn't know you could find most information about the game on the internet until the release of 3 Ultimate. That resulted in me going to the multiplayer hub a lot just to ask questions about the game. The majority of the time, people were kind and helpful, giving me great advice and letting me know tips and tricks. I even remember a friend I made that I would hunt with occasionally, but I never got his information for 3 Ultimate. I hope you're well, my dude, wherever you are. If you're seeing this video and you've never played Monster Hunter Try, I'd strongly recommend finding a way to try it out. The tutorial is long and the water battles are frustrating, but with its flaws, I think it still gives a fantastic experience for any Monster Hunter fan to enjoy. I've cherished my time with these games more than any that I can think of, and I can't wait to see what's next. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I want to do more videos like this, and I have a few ideas already planned. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter if you want to keep up with more of my stuff. Links will be in the description. I plan on doing some Monster Hunter Tri streams in the future. Again, big thanks to Gaijin Hunter, Monster Hunter Herney, Super Rad, and Monster Hunter Jacob for bringing me the inspiration to make this video. They all have great content, and their channels will also be in the description.